And now, our feature presentation. Hey guys, I'm Scarfy. I'm Naka. And I'm Cruz. And welcome to Subway for Entertainment, a determinedly drunk, geeky, and showful podcast where we'll be house and streaming entertaining, bringing you all latest entertainment news. Sets a lot like music appreciation class, talk about what's going on, certain topics, and see how people react to them in certain ways. Um, so, uh, and, uh, so how is everyone's weekend going? <laughs> I was, I was, I had like a little bit of a tangent there, but I didn't look over my notes and I got a little distracted. So how is everyone's, uh, week have been going so going far? Pretty good. I'm, I'm about to do a little bit of ASMR for the people. ASMR. Why? Why? Oh, why would you do that? Oh, because <laughs> you're open up a can, a bottle of soda, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that 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 makes sense. Um, no, but really, how 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 has your week? How has your guys' week been? Honestly, pretty good, all things considered. I uh, got a project completed for my final for Auto Body, which I didn't think I was going to complete, so I'm pretty proud of myself. So, mm. uh, all things considered, pretty good, and I got my holiday right. shopping done. Except I'm. I gotta get one thing for my sister, but that that'll be taken care of another day because it'll be booze. But uh, yeah. it'll be booze. <laughs> yeah. Apparently so. Yeah. Anyway, um, she doesn't um, listen. It's gonna be it's gonna be a bottle of red velvet Bailey's Irish cream. Yes, that exists. Set has been brought to you by Streamlabs. We are a nonprofit podcast, but we use this as our go-to for making more episodes and helping be bigger and better than ever before by purchasing equipment or other visual means. Please don't feel obligated. We are not asking for money to pay the rent, but if you have the heart to donate, it is greatly appreciated. Give us your money. Also, sorry, I was uh, typing something out to somebody real quick, so that's why I was uh, I was like saying, hey, by the way, I'm streaming in case you want to watch. But yeah. There we go. It's in the chat now. Yes, uh, yes, uh, please donate. <laughs> anyway. Um, you know, it's so, uh, Only donate if you really feel like it. There are other yeah, causes it's... that you could donate your money to other than us. We very much appreciate it, but with everything going on in the world, there's other people that could need your money more. I tell you, we are yes. not a local business. I mean... No, 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 no. Not business at we all, are... but... We we are, we are not a local business at all, and no, it's I don't put, it's, I don't it's, put these on my 401k or my tax savings. My tax no, write off. I talk about shit with other furries. I don't I don't want to I don't want to get billed and taxed for getting, you know, donations for well, donations that we help to improve the show, of course. But you know, one of those things. Um, so uh, so yeah, uh, I wanted to let you guys know that uh, a couple of hours ago, um. Cruz and I uh, just got done uh, streaming a uh, just got done streaming a movie. Do you want to talk about it, Cruz? Go yeah. ahead. I'm just gonna go yeah. sit over here in the corner while you guys talk about that because yeah. I didn't For watch sake, it because I wanted to relax. Yeah. 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 For the sake of I, I mean, you can still listen. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but I can tell you that um, the. So I kind of knew, almost knew what to expect from it. Even having all the the all those like boxes checked off of like what to expect, like there's character conflict, uh, how the artwork kind of plays into how the the mood of it is with playing with shadows and shapes and all that. Um, even then, it was like still very emotionally strong, and I really, I, I mean, damn. I, I hesitate to like, sh I don't shell out tens very often, but I think that this one earned a 10 because it was like a relatively small and you would think underappreciated project in the large scheme of things because as far as like best pictures goes, like best animation, everything goes like a small a film from like just a small animation. I don't know how small they are. I keep saying small, but like an Irish animated movie about people wolves and all that and it's very stylistically unique as what is the much title of the movie <laughs> wolf walkers yeah the yes. as far as, as much as that deserves to be uh praised for its efforts it unfortunately kind of goes under the radar and that's a thing with i've known all the time with music and like how good music goes under the radar far too often especially with the rock and roll hall of fame but I think that this one was like, it, it's a hidden gem. So I think it, it's it definitely a, 
prize or not prize what's the word it's a reward for those who do find it who do take the time to see it like it's and it's definitely worth the time to go and check it out and how did you feel about watching like like what was how did you feel after getting after finishing the film yourself i i assume you're going to say you absolutely adored it there's there's like uh, very there's few things i can say that are just like just not obvious or it's like it's beautiful animation beautiful like very good storytelling um the visuals and animation transitions even uh very fluid and like storybook looking just Mm -hmm. very consistent and it, it really plays into how how the story is supposed to be told um, the character. No, I just don't want to delve too deep into the details, but like the conflict of the characters, internal conflict between uh, who who they're loyal to and everything, like all that yeah. is just it really comes together in a very well constructed way. So I think that, and yeah, here's another thing. It's like just because like oh furries, we're like wolves and all that. It's like I, I think I would have enjoyed this movie anyway because I enjoyed. Um, like fantasy type films like this before I knew what a furry was. Um, yes. I think it's very, it's just, again, I guess I can call it just a hidden gem. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I hope it gets more attention though. I really hope, I hope it gets more attention. Yeah, I really do. Um, I did, uh, I did, uh, send this invitation to, uh, Naka, but he was, uh, he was rest. He was, he wanted to relax and I, I, who, relax I do hope he gets, uh, yeah. Main reason was is that I was house sitting this weekend, so uh, that meant I got to spend just time staying up. Uh, I played a lot of Doom Eternal yesterday. Yeah, boy. Have you played the DLC yet? Uh, I don't have the DLC yet, but I got to the point where I unlocked the. Uh, I think it's the ballista. So that's about how far I've gotten in the game. I'm playing on oh, like, the main game. Yeah, the main campaign. <clears throat> Uh, I, uh, like, I was playing on, I think, Hurt Me Plenty was the difficulty, so the second, uh, difficulty option. I was struggling at some points, because Doom Eternal kicks your ass. Yeah, here's the thing about, I have to say about Doom Eternal, um, people are be like, oh, just get good. It's like, no. The fucking Marauder. Now, listen. Here's the thing. It's one thing when you have to fight him one-on-one. That's all well and fair. But when he's in the midst of a whole arena of enemies, you have to focus on him. Otherwise, the dog just comes after you and just nibbles away your health. And it's like, come the fuck on. I mean, yeah, I did struggle with parts, especially that feature, the Marauder, in the late game, too. I'm just like, oh, my God. Don't don't talk Uh, about the late game too much because, again, I've only gotten up to the Ballista. I know the BFG makes a return and you blow up Mars at one point. Or you can't one just one blow one. a hole in Mars. Uh, hey, uh, I think uh, something. Yeah. I think. I think something is wrong with my chat. My chat isn't typing into the into the stream. That's no, it so is. interesting. It is. It's there. Well, it's sh- not appearing on the on the feed, so I don't know yeah, what's going on. It's fine. I see. Might it. just might just take a second to update. Yeah. Uh, because it, it's not one to one. I don't think. No, because this is going through. Uh, restream, Naka, Naka, I, and then it's being broadcast out again. So it's a lot of data input and then output. So you're te- mm-hmm. you're inputting data, and then it gets output on the YouTube chat. But that data still being input in the restream. Sometimes and then it's being and output. sometimes it doesn't. It it's not yeah, always going to be one to one. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, guys, please go see Wolf Walkers if you haven't. It's on Apple TV Plus. It's only uh, five bucks. And the best part is, is that you don't have to have an Apple product to watch it. So, yeah. you know, which Apple's is, which is kind of funny. I, I, I laughed, I laughed so <clears throat> hard. I think it's kind of funny how Apple TV plus is so like dirt cheap compared to all of its products. That's like thousands and thousands of dollars. I don't know. I just find it okay, funny. I guess because it's not a product, it's a service, but yeah. And it, it, I think this might be a discussion for another time, but I, all I've heard is that uh, there is a, a little bit of an eyebrow raising at the uh, price of the new AirPods or whatever. Yeah. Oh, 550 bucks for that shit? <laughs> I'm like, dude, uh, this is where um, we're, 
We're not sponsored by Raycon, but that's where they come to save the day. You know, uh, not to talk shit about Raycon, but I have seen, uh, I believe it was Dank Pod did a video on Raycons, and uh, it was hard for him to get them because he lives in Australia. So, but the, he did provide that there are other alternatives that sound better for a cheaper price point. And again, uh, I've had Raycons for about four months now. Uh, you know, they've been fantastic for what I'm using them for. I listen to a lot of podcasts mm-hmm. with them, but they're very bass heavy. And, you know, sometimes the bass can kind of outweigh uh, other, you know, tracks and how things are mixed. So. Yeah. Raycons, you know, for the price point, you can do better, but you can do a whole lot worse. I think that yeah. the the thing about bass is, like, people might be worried that the bass isn't good enough on products like these, but uh, when it is good enough and very good, you're like, okay, well, that's a little much. I think there's ways to mess around with it in your device of, like, how, to, how much bass goes into it or whatever, but... Again, I, I don't have them, so I uh, wouldn't know. You can look up the Dank Pods video on the Raycons, where, you know, he's not a big fan of them, but to each their own. And I anyway. like them for what I'm using them for. They went through the wash and they still work. I mean, I've watched Gray still plays, and he, like, cha- tried to, like, he fed he them through his lawnmower blender. and they still worked. He lawnmower, chainsaw blender, chainsaw. <laughs> yeah. Ran them over with a lawnmower. Still work. But we we have a show to get to because there, uh, I have some stuff to talk about. Cruz not so much, but Scarfy is gonna basically. If this is Scarfy's show, because there was a lot, a lot happened on Thursday. Oh yeah, there was a lot that happened on Thursday. But right now we're gonna go at we'll we'll talk more about it once we get to Naka's segment. But we're gonna go ahead and go to uh, Cruz with music. Cruz, go. So um, this was going to be last week, but. It was found out by me that um, there's a little bit of a mix up on Wikipedia in terms of dates. This was this release was listed as December 11th, but it is actually coming out on December 18th. This being Paul McCartney three by, if you can imagine, Paul McCartney. And uh, a few weeks ago, uh, from a randomly recommended video on YouTube. Uh, I found as as happens because YouTube randomly recommends something that's like actually a gem, uh, and all the comments can really attest to that. Like, be like, like twenty seventeen? No, twenty eighteen? No, twenty eight? Twenty nineteen? Not yet. Twenty twenty? Perfect. Uh, that's how it goes. But uh, uh, it's a little clip of an interview of Paul McCartney talking about ACDC, and it, uh, I I did my best to imitate him. He said. I'm a fan of uh, loud rock and roll, basically. And uh, I know the, the ACDC guys, uh, and they are loud. I haven't seen them live. Ooh, baby. Uh, very cool shout out. Just wanted to mention that. Just like, I've watched it a few times, and so I'm like, yeah, that's a really cool shout out, especially because ACDC got together again in, like, to make a new album this, se- this uh, season, this year. Uh, for the albums coming this year, that's Paul McCartney. Uh, McCartney 3 is the album. Uh, it's this 18th studio album coming out on the 18th. Um, and I haven't listened to the past two McCartney albums, uh, McCartney 1 and 2, respectively. Uh, the last I'd actually seen was like one called New. I didn't listen to anything from it. But uh, yeah, and this, above all, shows that he's done, done plan to stop making music anytime soon, even though this album, in his own words, um, I forget exactly what he said, but it was something to the effect of uh, this album wasn't entirely planned. It was more so that it just came together because he had a bunch of ideas. He had time to kill. And uh, sometimes that's just how things happen. I think that uh, that's happening more and more in a quarantine because like you got ideas, you got time to kill and you can record some stuff and uh, and then it just happens. Um, I can tell that, uh, I don't know much to talk about. I'm not going to stall for time because that's pointless. Uh, but next week uh, on our finale, I will definitely be talking about my personal favorite top 10 albums of 2020. So stay tuned for that next week. 
Also, our friend Ali's not next week. We still have more show to do. <laughs> well, we'll, our, get to the that. Year, we'll get to that. The though. finale of the year 2020. It's not going to oh, be our yeah. season oh, okay. finale. That, yeah, no, oh, no, I'm sorry. No, that, that, that works. Works. Yeah, finale of 2020, because, again, we're talking about the best albums of 2020, because we have had uh, some uh, some things released uh, for the year 2021, but they were released in 2020. I mean, we talked about Accept, uh, Love and Death, other things like not everything is always released in the same year, but it happened with Overkill in 2017, where it was supposed to be rela- released in 2016, The Grinding Wheel was. Uh, a song was released then, but then the whole album was released a year later, so it's bleh. But anyway, um, main announcement is Paul McCartney with uh, McCartney 3 coming out on December 18th. And uh, that seems to be the only set of music news that you have, right, Cruz? Yeah, it's a... Yep. Bit of a dry week, despite the mentions of the bar. Um, I can tell you that um, apparently, and I've looked at the 2020 album uh, little wiki page, and it seems that it doesn't even have the TBA ones anymore. And uh, McCartney is literally at the bottom of the list, so I, I don't think there's any more. <laughs> Not at least that Wikipedia has shown, but... uh. For, I mean, for, for the record, for the yeah. for the record, no, we don't usually get our we we don't like we we just need to let you guys know we don't really copy Wikipedia. We just need to make sure that the sources are correct, and Wikipedia usually has most, if not all, the time. Like you know, most of the sources correct. Sometimes we get a little hiccups so here and there, but you know, yeah. I guess like uh, t- for me, like for me, it's just games. that <laughs> it doesn't. Go I, ahead. Eh. It doesn't. Um, I don't. I don't copy stuff from Wikipedia. It's just like the date information because it organizes it very efficiently. Again, a lot of the stuff I find you know, from sources outside of Wikipedia, like Loudwire record labels that I follow on YouTube, other things. Most um, most, but, most of the news that we get are actually from news articles and real news stories. Yeah, so yeah, you know. Yeah, but I'm saying it. It's it's it might be a sign that like, Wikipedia doesn't show any more for 2020. There probably are more releases, but it's like, well, I guess we're done, we're done for the year. But uh, next week it will be not a huge thing, but it'd be a a thing because you know I'm very excited to talk about the top ten albums that I thought were the best of uh, 2020. But yeah, we're gonna finish up talking about uh, what we think about Paul McCartney, and uh, I don't, I didn't find any song. Just last note, I didn't find any songs, but. Uh, the video linked is like a, a, a trailer about the album. So I, I don't know if any songs were available since we would have talked about it last week, but uh, we do have a trailer and all that, like maybe hype video and all that. So uh, go and right. look for songs if you're interested. And uh, yeah, we'll look forward to talking about what's the best of 2020 to your boy Cruz. <laughs> all righty. Uh, now, uh, before we get into the next segment, this is, uh, my final racing recap of the year and quick little thing about Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077's weird, uh, because, uh, the game is really, really buggy on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, but it's more stable on PS5, the Xbox Series S and X, and PC, but it's the most stable on Stadia, which is surprising, I know, mainly because, you know, you're technically streaming the game from a supercomputer at a central server. You're not really having to deal with any hardware hiccups. So, there you go. That's probably part of the jankiness for a lot of people is just it's hardware fuckery. But, yeah, there was some bad news that came out of it where there's a sequence where you're putting on, like, a VR headset to, like, view somebody's memories and in that sequence, there is a flashing light pattern, uh, which has been, I believe, since Pat, uh, since this story came out, has since been patched out, where it was a light pattern that can be used to trigger seizures in people, which is not good. <laughs> but that has since been patched out, and there were reports of developers... Uh, having to work 80 to 100 hour crunch weeks 
after CD Projekt Red promised no crunch. Uh, and thankfully, with everything going on, uh, CD Projekt Red was initially going to give uh, bonuses to people for, uh, you know, for how well the game reviewed. And it's going well with critics, but users, you know, with all the jankiness, they're having different uh, experiences. Originally, the plan was developers and, you know, employees would get bonuses depending on how well the game reviewed. The CEO of CD Projekt Red has since changed that to where they're getting, every employee is getting a bonus that worked on Cyberpunk 2077. So, that's good. Uh, however, Scarfy, you're probably going to get mad at me because this is going to take like five minutes, but this will be the last time we talk about racing for the season because nothing's going right. to start up till February which is probably going to be after we're done. So, uh, okay. In other news, the super team for the 2021 Rolex 24 hour race at Daytona, uh, will, it's also going to include a hundred minute qualifying race during the roar before the 24 is the action express racing Cadillac Daytona prototype car with Jimmy Johnson, seven time cup champ, NASCAR cup champion, current IndyCar driver for Chip Ganassi and two-time Daytona 500 winner, Kamui Kobayashi, who uh, has won multiple Rolex 24s and is uh, the current uh, one of the current champions with Toyota Kazoo Racing in the World Endurance Cup, uh, Mike Rockenfeller, lots of uh, endurance wins, uh, 2013 uh, Deutschland Touring Masters uh or DTM champion, and Simon Paginot, who has an American Le Mans Series championship, an IndyCar championship, and won 2019's Indy 500. That is a stacked team. Right. Uh, so th- watch out for them. They're probably going to take the overall victory in Daytona come stacks on January stacks. or February. Uh, and today was the final race of the Formula One season at Abu Dhabi at Yas Marina. Uh, where Max Verstappen took the pole position the other day and won the race. Uh, I want to give congratulations to Lewis Hamilton for tying Michael Schumacher in world championships at seven and uh, passing him in wins this year, which is 92 or 93. And Mercedes-Benz takes the Constructors' Championship. And last but not least, uh, in NASCAR news, Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, California, has postponed their 2021 date, which is supposed to be the last one for their current configuration, to 2022 because of COVID restrictions. Uh, You know, there's spikes going on in California. Uh, Again, NASCAR wants a 2022 race, and they're going to push their reconfiguration of the... Uh, YouTube does not have a raid functionality, Zach. Uh, well, not, well, no, 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 not, not, not a raid. I, I'm, I'm saying like, you know, if he's on Twitch, he can tell all of his followers to like, he could, he could like it's put a link in Twitch and tell all. It's not automatic. We'll do it the old fashioned way. But at the same, we'll just do it the old fashioned way. He can put our link into the chat and he'll tell all of his followers to go raid us. I don't know. But with, <laughs> anyway, uh, but with Auto Club being delayed. Uh, you know, the reconfiguration is going to be delayed a year from its two-mile current layout to a high-banked half-mile short oval. Uh, this spells trouble for events that were scheduled for the Long Beach Street Circuit in Long Beach, California, which is the IndyCar race, the IMSA race, and Formula Drift, and maybe even the Sonoma race in June. And that's, you know, Sonoma, California. That's mid-California. That's a couple hours out of San Francisco. That's um, wine country. But, hey, people, uh, stay the fuck home, wear a mask when you go out in public, and don't go out in public and be a dick. Uh, it sucks. d uh, bad. Don't be a dick. Just please, please, please wear a mask when you go out. And try and, you know, with holiday season going on, it's going to be very difficult to avoid high volume stores and stuff like that. But just if you need to go into a high volume store, just get in and get out as quick as you can. Uh, that is our COVID update, as well as everything that is the uh, final racing update of the year. Now, what happened on Thursday? It's time to go with me with video games. 
The 2020 Game Awards uh, happened this year, albeit virtually. Jeff Keighley was in uh, whatever stage they're on, as well as another co-host. Also, Cruz, a fucking phenomenal job with the goddamn visual. <laughs> I I took great inspiration from Urinating Tree. Um, not only just for the year winner thing, but um, yeah, I I feel like the game awards have suffered a little bit of the same as like music awards. It's like I don't wish that on anyone else. Where it's like mediocrity gets or just mediocrity or big artificially inflated shit gets. Uh, congratulated for being the supposed best where it's like come the fuck on talk like you're a real human person but you know let's talk about the uh what unfolded Mm -hmm. so two may like i could talk about the game reveals but that's another like i'll talk about those games when they're starting to come out but like the two quote-unquote big reveals that happen that are happening almost immediately uh the new Smash Ultimate character, which was announced Thursday morning that was going to be revealed during the Game Awards. Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII, which means we will not have two Final Fantasy tracks. We will now have four. Thank God, because uh, we need more Final... Final Fantasy's tracks have been sorely lacking in Smash, all things considered. Mm-hmm. But but Sephiroth um, made big a big splash. Uh, originally, people were thinking it was going to be a Fortnite character, but that was just a Reddit and 4chan gag thing. Thank God it wasn't I got true. a lot of, I got a lot of people it was, it was saying the that Fortnite it was, it was tomato man. Like, I got God, a lot of people saying it was going now. to be uh, it was going to be Sora from Kingdom Hearts, but um, well, considering that Sora is from the same company as Sephiroth, well, I guess it's safe to say Kingdom we're not going to get right? Sora anymore. Kingdom Hearts, yes, uh, but, but Sephiroth is from Final Fantasy. Um, but yeah, I, needless, needless to say, I'm gonna say this right now: the the, the scene where <laughs> Sephiroth just Sephiroth stabs Mario. Mario, fucking <laughs> I don't know. Dies. Uh, it's, it's great. Sephiroth know, cut the light spirit in half. You know, the people Google are my Chrome. complaints like, "Oh, we have Gosh. more anime swordsmen." Yes, but this, but Sephiroth is the anime swordsman. And another yes. thing. Uh, some t- it was discovered sometime last week that the hero car from Cyberpunk 2077, the Quadra uh, Turbo R V Tech uh, from Cyberpunk 2077, uh, was found in the update files with the Super 7 update of Forza Horizon 4. Uh, hackers got their hands on it by getting early access to it, and then they put out Super 7 challenges for everybody to play and experience the car. Yeah, uh, during the Game Awards, there was a little uh, Forza Horizon 4 trailer uh, saying, Hey, by the way, starting tomorrow, the 11th of December, uh, play the NightCity.exe street race event in a one-on-one and win the car. So, if you don't uh, have Cyberpunk 2077 want to drive the hero car, there you go. It's a free event to do in Forza Horizon 4. <coughs> However, uh, Naka, you did miss a uh, you did miss uh, two... Uh... You did miss uh, two key uh, things that were announced in the uh, in the Game Awards. We're getting a brand new Mass Effect game, and we're also getting a brand new Dragon Age game, which I can't wait to see. Yep. Oh, my brand friend new Dragon loves, Age, brand new Mass uh, Effect. We're getting a Dead Effect. Space game, except it's not being by EA. We're getting a Left 4 Dead game, except it's not being published by Valve, uh, which is Back for Blood. There was a lot of good stuff that came out of the, the reveals that in this year's Game Awards. Uh, too much to talk about because I need to go over the award winners. Uh, I'm going in my list. I'm going bottom to top, so it's going to be best esports team at the bottom and game of the year at the top. Which, uh, yeah, yikes. Uh, so all right, big big oof. So best esports team G two esports. Uh, best esports hope. A host, uh, FG uh, Deporte, uh, Deportere, I can't, I'm sorry I butchered your name, I'm so sorry. If you ever Where's Alfredo this, Diaz when you need him? Uh, that would be uh, Shox, S-J-O-K-Z. Best Esports Game, League of Legends, Best Esports Event, League of Legends World Championship 2020, those are always fun events. Uh, Best Esports Coach, uh, Danny Zonic Sorensen. Best Esports Athlete, Hey, oh, showmaker Sue, content creator of the year, uh, Valkyrie. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and say this right. Honestly, I'm gonna say this right now. I feel like content creator and 
streamer should be two separate things because content creator and streamer are not the same. A streamer least, is more of a least... performance artist. A uh, content yeah. creator is more of like a movie director, so to speak. Correct, yeah. Um, anyway, continue. Uh, best multiplayer game, even though it came out in 2018, but due to its surge in popularity this year, uh, Among Us, which I found out only has a four-person developer yeah. team. Uh, <clears throat> so that is fantastic. Bravo to them. I, I played it uh, first time like uh, a few weeks ago. I never got to be the imposter, but it's really fun. It's it's a fun oh, it's... game. Uh, best I, sports... I think it deserved it. Uh, best sports slash racing game. Didn't go to a racing game and didn't go to a annual sports title that is mainly casino that features uh, a sporting event in it that you can play. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2. A Vicarious Visions did such a good job with the one with the Tony Hawk remake. Oh my I agree. god. They, that they pulled and off the upset. They're making it better. They're making it better too. They're I assume that they, up, they upset NBA 2K or whatever. They upset NBA 2K and FIFA uh, 21. Uh, they did beat out Formula F1 2020 and Dirt 5, though Dirt 5 was a bit lackluster. Uh, best simulation and stra- or strategy game. Unfortunately, strategy games kind of got blown out of the water with Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is, oh my god, Flight Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, one of the best simulation games I've ever played. I need a monster of a computer to play it without nuking itself, because whenever... The best part of it, I think that, uh, I think Gray actually played it once, but it's like, if you fuck with it, you can break the world. Yes, you can. And (laughs) the main reason why is that it is literally... Pretty much a one-for-one recreation of the entire planet Earth. You can fly in real time wherever you want with accurate weather, accurate, uh, you know, you know, because it's online, you know, there's other people flying, but accurate weather, accurate time scaling, you can do all of that. So pretty much every airport, every active airport in the world. Uh, Shut it up, is coming BWI. To- it is coming to Xbox next year, which is where mm-hmm. I will be playing it because I don't want to melt my computer while doing it. Uh, I don't want to melt my Xbox. No, it, it's going to be optimized for Xbox. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, best, best family game? Best family game, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Which is, I mean, we saw this one coming. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know why I they mean, want Crash, to call it Crash family Bandicoot, game. Uh, Cash Manuka 4. Uh, or Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time, got nominated for that. So that's cool. Uh, best fighting game, Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate. Yeah, that's pretty justified. Uh, best RPG, even though it's a game from the 90s. But but judging it as a game that was made this year, putting the 90s aside, Final Fantasy VII Remake be- uh, won Best RPG. Best Action Adventure Game, The Last of Us Part Two, which I don't agree with. Uh, best action game, Hades. Yes, I do agree with that. Innovation and accessibility, The Last of Us Part Two, which I give do it agree this. with. I'll give it that. Yeah. Uh, best uh, virtual reality or augmented reality game, Half Life. Alex. Oh my God, we had a half. We had a Half Life game this year. I I can't forget that. I cannot forget that. In t- the year 2020, with all the shit that went on this year, we got a Half-Life game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Best community support, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, which did announce a Season 3 update. Uh, during I still the haven't Awards, played Fall Guys, but it looked so goddamn fun. Best mobile game, Among Us. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, because it did start off as a mobile title that then got ported to Steam. Best debut yeah. game, Phasmophobia. Absolutely. That game yeah. exploded everywhere. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Late to the late to the game, but it did explode. Mm-hmm. Best indie game would be Hades, which is well deserved. Hades is great. I haven't played it, but I've heard so many good things about it. Best ongoing game. There were many options for this. Uh, mainly Call of Duty Warzone, I think. Uh, Valorant. Uh, League of Legends, I think, or Overwatch. Uh, this game, Destiny 2, I think those are the only ones, but No Man's Sky, 
Uh, it's been it's been coming back in a big way. No, like, I've played No Man's Sky debut. recently. Like, yeah, yeah, it did not do well when it first launched, as, but they as been... it used to be referred to, it used to be referred to as No Man Plays. Yes, but yeah. No Man's Sky has come back and has come so far from what it used to be with free updates. That's the crazy yes. thing is that there's been no paid updates to No Man's Sky, and it's so much better than what it used to be. Mm. Uh, games for Impact. Tell me why. Uh, best Ain't performance. I did make that joke when that was, you know, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, best performance, uh, Laura Bailey for Abby in Last of Us Part 2. Say what you will about the inclusion of her character in The Last of Us 2. She deserved none of the hate she got. But she she uh, she played the character extremely well. That's, she really did. Yeah, that's the thing with last of us that'll give credit to in a little bit uh yes best score slash music uh oh, you, Final you Fantasy forgot audio remake. design oh best audio design last of us part two again i'll give last of us two credit for that uh because but best score means yeah because last of us two is a technical and performance masterpiece of a game but yes. I'll get into why I don't think it deserved some of the awards it got in a couple minutes. And as for best score for music, Final Fantasy VII Remake, I have the soundtrack. I can clearly, I can 100% agree with that. Final Fantasy VII's Remake soundtrack is so fucking good. You know, if Bethesda, So good, if you ever get the chance to play. If Bethesda but didn't, Doom Eternal, though! Yeah, if Bethesda didn't bungle the initial release of the Doom Eternal soundtrack on streaming platforms, that may have won, because... They may have, oh my god, Doom Eternal They decided to piss Mick Gordon so off, good. and that's what you don't do. Doom Eternal yeah, soundtrack so. is so good. Uh, let's see, best art direction, Ghost of Tsushima. Thank you for giving Sucker Punch something. I have a cousin who works for the studio, so I'm so glad they at least won something this year. Because a lot of the categories they were nominated for, The Last of Us Part 2 won. Uh, best narrative, yeah. which I do not agree with. It is very much a bit of a Last of Us fan fiction game. Uh, Last of Us Part Two won best narrative. Uh, best game direction, no. Neil uh, Neil Druckmann's a cuck. Uh, Last of Us Part Two, and unfortunately, because it won so many other awards, and because they probably paid the Game Awards a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> The Last of Us Part Two won Game of the Year, which I do not agree with, purely from a directorial and narrative standpoint. I understand that for accessibility options, it is one of the best games ever made. For a performance perspective and a visual and audio perspective, it is one of the Very best good. games ever made. But from a story from perspective... from a story perspective and directorial direction. perspective... It should not have won a uh, game of the year, in my opinion. That should have gone to either Hades or Ghost of Tsushima or fuck. What were the other uh, like? What There's were the other Doom couple that Doom I was Eternal. Final, Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII remake, Final Fantasy VII Animal remake. Crossing, Animal, Animal Crossing, Crossing New but... Horizons being nominated for game of the year this year. I that was a joke. I understand <laughs> why they did it. That's a false hope, but yeah, it was a, it was very much a false hope. But, but here's the it thing. Was very popular. I think, it would have been very cool, and I said this before on the show. It would have been so cool, just as a a, a, a moment for uh, I don't know the because of the relationship that's been formed between Doom and Animal Crossing since their inception or release date, rather um, that one would congratulate the other on winning Game of the Year or winning certain awards and be like, it would have been such a cool moment, and it probably would happen, but uh, because uh, we can't have nice things. So, uh, it did. so I want to say I, I just want to say this: the the worst part of the narrative about The Last of Us Part Two and Druckmann this year that he's won the Game Awards in pretty much most of the key categories is that a guy cr is that a guy crunch that crunched his employees into the ground, reveled in it, injected jokes about it into his game in this current climate, is encouraging hate on Twitter. Not only did he not get canceled. He got promoted by his company to an even higher level where he can continue to perpetuate that culture of crunch for all time from an even higher point in the company. I'm not going to say I'm not going to go so far as to say he's an awful human being, 
But it's just very surprising that he survived this current environment. Like, Crunch exists, and there's a lot to be said about it, and a lot of people look into the concept of why it happens and when it happens, should it should or should it not happen. One thing that can be said about it, don't fucking gloat about it. Like, just... That's the thing, is that I don't think that he's going to pay his employees. Uh, they're not going to get compensated for all these awards. Uh, unlike CD, what CD Projekt Red is doing... Uh, by compensating their employees, by giving all their employees a bonus, regardless of how well Cyberpunk 2077 is doing. And yeah, it's a bit jank. It's really jank. But, uh... I'm honestly worried for Naughty Dog because, you know, now that, you know, Druckmann is now co-president of the company, it just makes things... I don't want to say awful but it makes things like you know very very unhopeful for the people who have worked on the game at naughty dog and i'm just gonna say this right now like what are your opinions when it comes to crunch i see the thing with crunch is that unless you're like an indie studio or you're a game that's in early access you don't really have to deal with crunch but if you are a triple A studio who has to meet deadlines, uh, crunch is going to be inevitable. The way that I see that feel that crunch should be handled is that CD Projekt Red did not handle that correctly by saying that they were not going to have crunch time when they did. They should have just said, "Hey, you know, unfortunately, we're going to have crunch," or they should have just kept quiet about it because. You, 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 like one, like making one a promise that, you can't you know, keep is something that is going to piss off a lot of people, especially about crunch time. And if crunch time like, is bound to happen, employees need to be compensated accordingly uh, mm-hmm. because a lot of the times they're working a lot of overtime uh, mm-hmm. and they need to be paid overtime. And depending on their living situation, you know, obviously if it's rent or something like that. That's one thing, but if it's like childcare and all that kind of stuff, uh, they need to be compensated accordingly for that, for having to schedule all that stuff. Bragging about it like Neil Druckmann did and injecting jokes about all that kind of stuff into the games, not cool. It's it's a bullshit move. It's bullshit. And I and here's the thing, you you also need to understand video game developers, they're they're still human. They're not factories. No. Like, they're, they're not robots. They don't, you know... I mean, let, 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 let's make that clear. Fact, Nintendo is a company. Nintendo's employees are people who work in the company. They are not machines. They are not robots. Yeah. They are people. Yeah. They make, you know, they do everything they can, so... And I've, th- I've worked with indie game studios, and I've helped friends who are starting to get in, you know, who are doing classes for game development. It is... And, you know, I've done a little programming myself. <clears throat> it's not easy. It's not easy. And especially with small studios who are making, you know, more budget titles, <clears throat> SMG Studios, who, you know, they... I feel like moving out, it's... Basically, it's overcooked, except you're not cooking meals. You're just trying to get furniture out of a building and into a moving truck yeah. as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. Instead of, you know, taking orders, getting stars and all that. It's it's really fun. Uh, but, you know, for a small studio, I feel like they should have been nominated for Best Family Game of the Year, but they were going up against some really stiff competition. So I agree. That's, that's uh, another so, thing that... When teams or teams, I mean, they when the people put forth like a genuinely great product, and this is just I said teams because I was thinking about the college playoffs and that hell. It's not really a playoff if it's only four teams because I mean my my Florida Gators, my fan of team, a fan of the rank number six, only the top four go into the playoff. I'm like, come on, it's not really a playoff, but the that's another thing. But this, it's like, yeah. I think that the only way that it would have been acceptable to brag about a crunch is if, first of all, if the employees are compensated for like overtime and all that, but or touting it as, hey, we got this done before anyone expected us to. Sure, yeah, that's great. But if you're bragging about it as like 
working people down to the bone. No. And then, uh, and I, I sent you all on uh, Telegram the you know, EA in a nutshell for anyone who wants to have an. Oh, that's truth, something. Truth qui- that's something quick. I need to bring up is that uh, the EA in a nutshell video. It's a. It's very true and very funny. Well, so something I want to quickly bring up that I should have brought up at the beginning of my segment is that uh, Codemasters uh, received an offer a couple of months ago from Take Two. Uh, for like a buyout, so that you know, Take Two would acquire Codemasters as the developer and publishers publishing studio. Uh, EA put in a bid today uh, that I'm not sure if it meets or it outmatches uh, what Take Two is offering. But those two are about to go to war for Codemasters, and mm. either way, it's not going to be good for Codemasters because Take Two, they're the people behind the monetization of. The NBA two K of the two K franchises, uh, Grand Theft Auto Five, uh, you know, it's not good, and we all know how EA is with some of their games and their surprise tra- surprise mechanics. You know, looking at you, FIFA and NBA and uh, Madden. I don't know if NHL's this way because I don't play like Ultimate Team in NHL. Uh, if there even is a mode for that, but. Uh, we all know how EA can be, and either way, it's not going to be good for Codemasters, and it's going to suck for them. Yeah, but probably. It is time for me to relinquish control. Actually, no, it's not. I have another game to talk about. No, it's not. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. No, it's not. I have something else to talk about. Uh, yeah, it, I was like, I thought, wait, it's... I thought, oh, I don't have to talk about the Game Awards. No, I have to talk about Collection of Saga, Final Fantasy Legend. Yes. In one digital collection, players can experience the first three titles in the revered Saga series, uh, the Final Fantasy Legend, Final Fantasy Legend 2, and Final Fantasy Legend 3. Uh, created by Akitoshi uh, Kawazu, and it was released on Game Boy in 1989, making it the first RPG on the Game Boy. Uh, long-time fans will enjoy a faithful recreation of these classic 8-bit titles in this nostalgic pioneering adventure. Uh, Collection of Saga Final Fantasy Legend is a great introduction to this quintessential series RP- uh, that RPG fans will not want to miss out as they journey through fantasy worlds, fight monsters, explore towns, uh, battle in dungeons, and more while enjoying brand new features that improve the experience including character speed boost, adjustable screen magnification, retro display mode that to, to replicate that glorious Game Boy experience where you can take out the Joy-Cons and to the screen, hold it vertically, and play like you're actually playing on a Game Boy, which is, that's cool. I don't see a lot of games doing that. Yeah, that is cool. Uh, and new commander of music and illustrations. And, you know, additional features include, uh, you know, special anniversary song, eight different in-game wallpapers, and the choice to play either in Japanese or English text. Uh, again, I just mentioned the fact that you could take the Joy-Cons out, hold it vertically, and play it like a Game Boy, uh, using the on-screen buttons to replicate the authentic Game Boy system-like experience. This is a digital-only release. I don't know if there's going to be, like, a collector's edition being released that's going to be a limited run. Uh, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a, uh, there's a limit date. There's a, a there's a, a limited date or that you have to buy this in order for it to not be no, uh, like a limited anymore, run. But... Like they're only going to produce so many of them. Like a yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that exists, but like I that just, would uh... be like there, there would be an art book. There'd be a copy of the soundtrack on CD. That's typically what goes in collector's editions uh, for these types in, of deals. It, but this is going to be a digital only release for the Nintendo switch on December 15th. So, uh, Yeah. It's going to be, I so, uh, believe I read that this is going to be like 20 or 30 bucks, which I mean for three Game Boy games kind of, you know, reimagined and all that kind of stuff. It's a pretty good deal. I mean, I would say so considering, I would say it's a, I, would, I don't want to say it's too expensive, but I think it's a little, It's a, the price is just a little high for me. But I, but at the same time, 
Um, these games are not available anywhere else. You can't like the only way that you can ever buy them is if you um, find the you know copies have... of Game Boy cartridges in retro game stores. Or if you're with your dad, we're which, set Nintendo for real. Which, which, let's be honest, none of that exists. So you know, and and it wasn't on the Nintendo 3DS uh, eShop either. So take that for what you will. But yes, I would highly recommend uh, if you are a fan of the Final Fantasy Legend. I know some people who are fan and fans of this little you know niche project but um hey uh if this is where it got you into uh you know final fantasy uh i guess other parts of final fantasy then this is the game for you um i don't know if i'll ever buy it but hey the fact that you're putting game boy color games on the nintendo no, switch the is... original game boy not game boy color well oh, right boy. original game boy well, original Game Boy and Game Boy Color are, are kind of one one and of the same, even though shit. even though the Game Boy Color has the you know the color sprites. But yeah, yeah if you hence have the, chance, the name. Would, <laughs> if you have the chance, I would recommend this wholeheartedly. Yeah, um, give it a shot. Um, but that's all I have to say about Final uh, Collection of Saga Final Fantasy Legend. This was the only game that you had on your repertoire. Uh, uh, yes, for the correct. Week, right? Restream, Naka? restream, chat. Are you doing okay? Because uh, mm. I'm noticing that the link that I posted is not showing up on the screen. Uh, it oh. says it's connected. Uh, That's so. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have a we're having a little bit of a. Little hey, bit of it's, no, it's nothing that we can control. Uh, how about uh, I'll just uh, I'll go ahead Megan. and. Uh, Th- there we go. go. It's working now. There we go. There we go. It All just right, didn't uh, like my trying. link. I don't. You did it. You did it. Goku. I think it's because I'm posting links. Maybe is that what's causing that issue? But. Uh, let me uh, let me try. I don't know, but. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Let me, uh, we must move on and, uh, to. Uh, I don't have many announcements to Scarfy with movies, so go ahead, Scarfy. I'll see if this works. Uh, did I? There, did it I, works I now. It just had a hiccup. All right. Then. All right. All right. Well, guys, uh, we have some major, major news regarding the upcoming Spider-Man film, and and boy, is there a lot to talk about. On Hollywood Reporter on Tuesday of this week, it was reported that. Alfred Molina, the actor that played the iconic role of, of the supervillain Dr. Octopus in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, will be reprising his role in the upcoming untitled Spider-Man 3 film starring Tom Holland as the current web slinger, directed by John Watts. However, as, our, as hours passed, more and more news kept pouring out about the potential rumors of old actors returning to the film, and, and now, guys, it's official. Jamie Foxx from... The Amazing Spider-Man 2, directed by Mark Webb, will be reprising his role as Electro. But that's not all. Emma Stone, as Gwen Stacy, is expected to also be appearing. As well as Kirsten Dunst as Mary Jane Watson from the original Spider-Man with Sam Raimi is a lock-in. Meaning she will be in this movie. But we have even the biggest piece of news. Andrew Garfield will be reprising his role as Peter Parker from the Mark Webb films and the cream of the crop. Tobey Maguire, the most popular iconic role as Spider-Man from Sam Raimi, is in talks of returning back as the original Peter Parker that we all know and love, dance scenes from Spider-Man 3 or no in this upcoming film. Reports indicate that Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange will be having a key role in this picture to set up the events of the next film with the Sorcerer Supreme in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which will be directed by, get this, Sam Raimi. Insert coincidence, I think not mean here. Coincidence, I think not! Our speculation talks yeah, end with, with Charlie Cox from the Daredevil Netflix TV series rumored to be appearing in this film as well. Next thing you tell me is that Brian Reynolds' Deadpool is going to show up too, though I think that is a hard pass with studio execs. Depending on how reports go, if what I have stated is true, we could be looking at probably the biggest Spider-Man film, if not the biggest, since Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and that wasn't even that long ago. If this becomes a live-action Spider-Verse film, which rumors have also reported to be the case, this may as well be seen as another Avengers film. However, only time will tell with this one. We'll just have to wait and see what they decide to do. 
depending on how the storyline will go will depend on what they decide to do with the upcoming films with Spider-Man and the next Doctor Strange movie, since both of those films are interconnected in some manner. However, this is exciting news, and I personally can't wait to see what happens. The only thing I hope is that I hope all the actors share an equal amount of screen time together. Naka, Cruz, what do you have to say about this? We already get a pizza delivery scene, that's all I'm saying. Okay, okay. Well, yeah. well, other than that, what do you have to say, Naka, Cruz? Uh, Naka? This is going to be... Uh, I think due to contract restrictions and the fact that, you know, Tom Holland is the main Spider-Man in this film, they're not just going to automatically be like, hurdy dur, I got all my Spidey pals here from other universes. Ha ha, let's go on, on our adventures and stuff like that. They're not going to do that. Come on. No. It's going to be more than five minutes of screen time, though. However, it's not going to be like, oh, they're all going to have 30 minutes each in this 90-minute film. I would like them to share an equal amount of screen. I would like them to share an equal amount of screen time. You know that's not going to happen, though. Everything. We'll we'll, we'll see what happens because, you know, I'm expecting this film to be at least two and a half hours, if not three hours, depending on how things go. But I would say, I don't think... I mean, the equal screen time, I mean, you, you wish it would happen, but uh, I don't know. Because if they have, they, they, if both Garfield and Maguire, um, the, 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 the two previous Spider-Men in the roster, as well as Holland, you're like, well, it kind of must have, I feel like it might be like some, it, it might delve into some like backstory, how some events go into each other maybe how the helm was passed between spider-man like uh how it was between well, at least in the uh talking about the spider-man games on playstation between uh peter parker and miles morales and, and miles morales was the main focus of uh uh Sp- the spider-verse movie but uh, i mean you you have ideas to play with but it might i don't think they're going to be exactly evenly dosed but it there, there's an opportunity to make a really cool movie here. I just don't know exactly. I mean, probably very few people know exactly what the what they're planning here, uh, so, um, plot wise to do. And we can only and we can only go off by speculation. We still don't know the key details. The only things that have been said are yes, this, this, and this character are going to be in it. We're still wondering if these, these, these characters are going to be in it. So it really all depends. Um, but yeah, I do kind of hope they share an equal amount of screen time together. I don't want to just see five minutes of Tobey Maguire the same way we only saw ten minutes of Venom in uh, in you know Spider Man Three, which was a poorly done film. But it, the funny thing was that you see the this you mentioned the Spider Man dancing from that, and there's a whole uh, I think it's a YouTube video of um, it's by him dancing but with no music, so it just looks extra awkward. Yes. So, of course, we have a lot to talk about, and, you know, it's uh, it's just one of those things where we still have to worry about what's going to happen. So, anyway, um, we're going to, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, move on to our next, move on to our, uh, the week ahead. And uh, you did, you got the, uh, you, infor- you, you, you got the wrong poster for this, but I'll just go ahead and let it slide because you were kind of trying to um, Resolution find one that over. Was... You wanted yeah, res- more pixels, that's what yeah. I said. Uh, more pixels smoothed out over the nice frame uh, rather than less pixels jumbled up. I prefer, so, like, as, aller- as someone who's allergic to peanut butter, I can't really say this, but I, I chose creamy over, over chunky. <laughs> I'm please laugh hey okay. hey if if the stuff coming out of you is chunky that's that's concerning <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway it's monster hunter <laughs> just shut up <laughs> anyway go ahead we're gonna go ahead and uh, yes yes uh well it's time for the video game movie guys yep you know how that all works out when it comes to video game adaptations Monster Hunter is a 2020 action film produced, written, and directed by Paul W.S. Anderson based on the video game series The Same Name by Capcom. The film stars Mila Jovovich, Tony Ja, T- Tip T.I. Harris, Megan Good, Diego Bonetta, Josh Hellman, Jin Ai Young, and Ron Perlman. 
Directed by the same guy who directed the live-action Resident Evil films, has dipped his leg into Capcom waters once more, with where an elite force, a uh, military force led by a U.S. Army Ranger Captain Artemis, fall through a portal into a world populated by giant monsters. They meet a hunter who helped them survive in the world and fight against the monsters as they seek a way home. So, I never played any of the uh, Monster Hunter games, so I can only go off by the people who play them, and they've all told me that, they've, uh, that they're great games, and for what it is, I'm glad the fan base exists. Now, I can, as for I can the movie... Interject. I can interject that. Um, uh, my sister has played it, um, and I've watched her play it. Uh, it looks very fun. It looks... It, from, from the poster, this looks like a dragon, but it seems like a lot more of the creatures are dinosaur-based. I guess that's the so only discrepancy I can see. So yeah, guys, this is a Chinese poster of Monster Hunter. It isn't. It is a. It is an American film product. Pro, project. Let's just. Well, let's get that out of the way. Way right now. It's not in Chinese. It's in English. Okay. All right. But it's uh, in Chinese if it's in China. Yeah. Once again, directed by the guy who directed the Resident Evil films. As for this movie, I don't have high hopes for. Now, I'm glad that the fan base exists, but you know, for this movie, I don't have high hopes for. Now. That's not to say this film won't, at the very least, be entertaining. I'm sure people will find it interesting. The director was able to get some of the original monster designers to work on the film from the video games. But I think people are looking at this movie to sort of make fun of it for how it got things wrong, if anything else. And if you're wondering, I, I accidentally forgot to put the, uh, the, uh, the film date in. Oops. Uh, the film uh, releases on... Uh, December 18th on Friday. So December uh, so, 18th in the United States, uh, probably yes. also Canada. So this released probably. December 3rd in some countries in Europe. Uh, yes. According to Wikipedia, the Netherlands, then it released December 4th in China. So, you know, they have less COVID restrictions because they actually handle this crisis better. But they got they got to groom so, the video more and, intensely. Uh, if you live in the United Kingdom and you're listening to this, uh, depending on when you listen to this, it's already out because you could be listening to this in like 2023 and you're just like going back. It's like, oh hey, look at this podcast from 2020. Hello, future. Uh, so January 29th, so, uh, 2021 is the United Kingdom release date. So um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get into some controversy uh, regarding this film. Um, so Let's the film was released right in, in. Yes, so the film was released in China on December 4th, uh, 2020. Sounds good enough, right? Uh, the film caused an uproar on Chinese social media because of a scene in which uh, Jin's character jokingly asks, Look at my knees! And to the question, What kind of knees are these? And he replies, Chinese. Though the language may You're going to get offended film, over a joke that's so of... Uh, 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 absurdly stupid this is yeah, through the, through the language that made offended by, by the winnie the pooh shit through the language made by the film subtitles uh chinese viewers interpreted this as a reference to the racist playground chant chinese japanese dirty knees uh, yeah and therefore as an insult to chinese people the yeah, film was I, I removed that. from circulation and chinese authorities censored references it, to it online uh ten cent had Tencent had reportedly uh, prepared modified versions of the films so omitting the line, but even these showings were pulled. The reaction oh, to the film has you, has also caused has also caused Chinese users to review bomb Monster Monster Hunter World in reference to the insulting lines. Of course they the do. Reviewing bombing, yeah. Of course they did. Because um, that's obviously of what course. you should do. Is you should, uh, you know, you should actually review bomb. You shouldn't review bomb in the first place, but you're review bombing a game that has nothing to, that technically has nothing to do with the film other than it's in the same franchise. Get the fuck out of here. Ander uh, Anderson least... stated that it was never our intention to send a message of discrimination or disrespect to anyone. To the contrary, as its heart, our movie is about unity, and that line, uh, and that the line had been removed from all international versions of the film prior to their releases. So let us bow now in unity to the CCP. Basically, so I'm pretty sure if we're going to get this film, they have probably edited that line out in our in oh, our country but you know. congratulations china you get the watered down version of fucking everything well yeah, I'm, well i was actually ta i was actually talking about the us as well they may they, uh, they may control actually what goes onto our screens now too because they're the biggest market in the world oh my god oh my god yeah, oh don't you, you, not get me started with all this shit oh yeah all right well fuck you um, 10 cent 
anything else you want to say regarding this film? Uh, bollocks. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, All right. I I hope it just does well. I hope it's actually a good, fun movie. Uh, I'm gonna put that aside because that was not the intention uh, mm-hmm. of what they meant to say. It's just people, and you know, I don't blame people for thinking, oh, that's supposed, to, you know, it's you know, it's a discriminatory thing. I don't blame people for thinking that. But, yeah. you know, because China, they need to sanitize absolutely everything they get their hands onto and make it worse for the rest of the world. Basically. All right. Well. Thing that with, that with how they, they handle it, it's like, you're talking about the same place that was, like, almost, it seemed like, willing to go to political war over the Winnie the Pooh comparison when you're like, God, that's not even that good of a joke. I mean, racism is bad. We all condemn it. I, racism is fucking horrible. As an American, we deal with it. Holy shit, we have it here. But you just like... Right. You, you, sometimes you just have to wonder who the anyway. fuck is making these decisions. That's how the world works. All right. Yeah, they're dictators. Are we gonna, Speaking of dictators, are we gonna move down, on? down to the Chinese overlords. Uh, Walt Disney, there's a big Disney investor thing. Well, no. Well, we have one more film we have to talk about. Oh yeah, shit, fuck. Yes. Shit, fuck, yeah. But shit, fuck. Well, this one does. Uh, we'll bow down to, to, a, to our a Chinese fallen overlords hero later. of ours. Wait, what? We'll what, bow what down to our Not Chinese ahead. overlords later. But first, we actually have to talk about a bit of a serious film. Jokes aside, yes, uh, we need to be serious for a minute. Well, yes, more, for more uh, than a minute, but you know what I mean. Oscar season continues with another film that deals with issues of art, of race, art, religion, and the historic exploitation of black recording artists by white producers. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom is a 2020 American drama film directed by George C. Wolfe and written by Ruben uh, Santiago Hudson, based on the play of the same name by August Wilson, produced by Denzel Washington, Todd Black, and Danny Wolfe. The film stars Viola Davis and Chadwick Boseman as the main characters, with Glenn Turman, Coleman Domingo, and Michael Potts in supporting roles. Tensions and temperatures rise over the course of an afternoon recording session in 1920s Chicago as a band of musicians await trailblazing performer, the legendary mother of the blues, Ma Rainey. Late to the session, the fearless, fiery Ma engages in a battle of wills and her white manager and producer ever the control of her music. As the band waits in the studio's claustrophobic rehearsal room, ambitious trumpeter Levy, who has an eye for Ma's girlfriend and is determined to stake his own claim on the music industry, spurs his fellow musicians into an eruption of stories, truths, and lies that will forever change the course of their lives. Levy's ambition to start his own band has also has him soliciting the managers and producers, requiring him to relieve previous traumas. So... I guess it's good. I guess it's a good enough time to bring something up we haven't really haven't talked about on this channel. In fact, I dare say it was inevitable. Chadwick Boseman, one of the most prolific actors who practically hit it big time with Black Panther, sadly passed away this year to undisclosed stage four colon cancer, shocking nearly the entire world when his passing was announced. I, and I'm gonna to see him in the quick, I'm gonna cut you off real quick. Okay. We did talk about this. We actually did talk about this. I remember talking about it, this on the show. There's a little bit. Um, I had mentioned that uh, he was in 42, where he portrayed Jackie Robinson, and in a film that is related to my region of history, um, before the Brown versus Board of Education, where he played uh, Thurgood Marshall, and uh, there was a murder case. But uh, and- yeah. Man, but yeah, Black Panther it did a great job, and man, it's it, a real fucking shame. It's, and it's way, to, to, gone too I'm soon. I'm just gonna say this. I'm just gonna say this right now. To to see him in this film, which is his final role, where he looks dramatically a lot scrawnier than he used to, as opposed to the very bulky man in Black Panther, it. It almost makes me choke up to imagine what that time felt like knowing what he was going through with that pain. Like you, you can you can almost see the cancer having more of an effect due to how scrawny he looks in this film. And I guess it's safe to say that he left us a, a going away present, you know, in this film as it has been getting mad reviews when it released theatrically. And I hope this film does well because it looks fantastic. Uh, we have a little more to talk about when it comes to Chadwick Boseman later on in the show, but we'll get to that in a bit. 
either way, the film releases on December 25th. I don't know why I put November. Oh, maybe it did release. Oh, Mary Crambo. Mary Crambo. Did, did this film already come out? Hold on. I must have. I, th- I just saw it. a trailer for this um, before I went upstairs to, <laughs> to to join you all for the podcast. Um, so I don't know. It, it might be uh, maybe December. I'm, I, I saw a trailer on TV. Let me uh, let me take a look. I may have gotten it wrong. Uh, I if if so, then I feel really really stupid for even bringing this up. It did come out on November twenty fifth. Well, well, you missed oh. it. Well, oh, well, it's fine. Hold on, hold on. Hey. Hold on. Before beginning to stream on December eighteenth, twenty twenty. Okay, so I didn't miss it. Okay, so it will be streaming on Netflix on December eighteenth, twenty twenty. It's fine. So hey, I. I, I posted something that I had like missed or missed. I didn't miss it because it was just released on a, a Friday before a show, and that was the Dying Heafy EP. But uh, this one, I did actually see the trailer for this. Um, it was on TV uh, in the midst of me going downstairs and going back, and I saw this come up, and I'm like, oh, hey, we're going to mention to my parents. I'm like, hey, we're going to talk about this. Um about music and i think that was it was it was it uh bozeman who was in that movie about james brown also yes he was was. he played james brown yeah so i i still need to see that i haven't seen that i just wanted to reference that but uh yeah um naka when you see this when you see this trailer and you notice that this is his final film role that he was in and believe it or not he actually ended up dying during post-production of this film like, and you see him scrawnier, like, what's going on in your mind? It's, you know, it's the unfortunate truth that, uh, you know, at the time we wouldn't have known, you know, if he was still around, like, what was going on, because he was very quiet about it. He didn't want the media basically taking control of his life if he, if he did come out and say, yeah, I've been dealing with cancer for so long. Uh, I think the reason why he said that he didn't want to um, talk about it was the fact that he didn't want the folks at Disney to know how sick he was. Because if they heard the words colon cancer, they would find him a replacement and that would be the end for him. That is that I think that is the why. And there was so much pressure on regarding Disney and regarding Black Panther, like, you know, and I think he really wanted to keep that in importance when it came to this film. At least at least that's what I think. Um, I don't know if you agree with it, but I think that's a, a fairly good answer. Um, that that does seem the, to make the most sense, because Disney, you know how Disney can be. Bow down to the Disney overlords, everybody. Uh, yeah, well. But honestly, because, you know, he just, he didn't want to be replaced. He wanted to make the films that he wanted to make. And, you know, he wasn't going to let his health get in the way, essentially, until. Indeed. Yeah, I think that, it, I, I don't know his personal situation, how he, how soon he knew that, I mean, it's it's impossible to imagine how you would react when you are told that you, again, not gonna I watch Unisonis and all that. It's like when you are told when your clock is going to be up, more or less. It's like it, it's possible to know how you're going to react, and a lot of people, I'd imagine, like get as much done as you can and like do uh, the best that you can in the time that you have, and that's basically the message there. Um, yeah, I feel like Bozeman before that even did uh, great movies, especially Forty Two and uh, uh, Marshall, uh, which is rather the Marshall uh, Third Good Marshall, uh, a relative or not relative, someone popular in the area, Baltimore. Uh, yes, and yes, Brown for Sport Education. It's like it, it took the same approach of like. Um, David Daniel or David Oyelowo mm-hmm. uh, in uh, Selma versus before the March on Washington. It was like before they did this, they did this. And this was a case before uh, Board of Education where it was uh, 
Bosman and uh, Josh Gad did a great job there. Um, and I think that I, I kind of applaud him for this, that he just took it, you know, did what he loved until the end. Uh, as much as people might, as soon as anyone would have heard that he had like cancer, they would have like, oh, just just stop and stop and heal. But I feel like he must have known that it might have been too late and that he was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to just do the best I can with the time I have. And uh, that, I mean, and that's a did. real noble thing did. to do. Yeah, he, yes. he's done a great job. Uh, one of one of my personal favorite actors of the recent years. And, uh, man, it's a real shame to see him go. And uh, what's, it, what's, it's, it's not going to be the same without him. What's, what's interesting about Chadwick Boseman is that what you see on camera doesn't necessarily mean what you see in real life. Yeah, because, that's another thing. Yeah, and it's like, like, how pretty, they're dealing with it outside of uh, outside of the film set. But uh, they're putting sure, on a brave face for everyone. Indeed, I'm pretty sure Chadwick Boseman, there was a lot of things going on in his mind while he was playing Black Panther, and he didn't let anyone know. He didn't let him, he didn't let this destroy him. He didn't, and I was really, really happy to to, to know that he did what he want, what he needed to do, and you know it's going to be upsetting with him. And, and sadly, the news doesn't end here. We still have a little bit more to talk about, but again, we will talk about that to- later towards the show because uh, we have a huge thing that we need to talk about, and it's called the Walt Disney Company Investors Day 2020. Running concurrent with the Game Awards, it seems uh, movies weren't left out of the room either. Uh, looks like the House of Mouse has released upcoming news in their Disney Investors Day conference, uh, where they showed a lot of upcoming movies, sports, and TV shows, which will be mostly featured on Disney+. Plus. Disney+, Plus will soon be expanding to more countries from EMEA to Asia and releasing Star, a Hulu-like service owned by Disney for international companies that does not include the U.S. <laughs> um, Wait, EMEA, you mean Europe, America? EMEA. Correct, yes. Uh, okay, I, included... I didn't know if that was an A uh, term. I included the link with uh, with uh, I included the link which includes the presentation video as well as slides. For whatever reason, I couldn't find a YouTube link for this video from an official channel, so I had to use one straight from the Disney website. I mean, it works fine. It works fine at least. There's nothing wrong with the link, so I guess it's more it so works. the fact that it's I just not a YouTube of, video. I, yeah, I just kind of prefer YouTube because it's just a little more convenient, but it's fine. Um, now I've included to the, the thread Disney of overlords. Hold on, hold on. I haven't done. I'm not done yet. I've included the thread of tweets that include the news and release dates for every new thing coming out. There are also some slides if you want to look at. Unfortunately, I cannot go over them all, so I think it's best to talk about the points of interest that, at the very least, have been given a title card. I know this sounds like a huge dump, so please try and bear with me here. First things first that we need to talk about is Raya and the Last Dragon finally has a official release date, March 25th. Uh, March 5th, rather, 2021, which is my 28th birthday, both in theaters and on Disney Plus with Premiere Access. I'm assuming they're with, and I'll just give you a heads up on what Premiere Access. I'm assuming they're going to be going the Mulan 2020 route. However, no price tag has been given yet, so at least you'll be able to, uh, fa- we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it as it comes when the, when the price tag is renounced. Um, so, uh, let's, uh, you know, I uh, I I want to see it. It's it's Disney. I like what they make. So, um, Ray and the Last Dragon, March fifth, twenty twenty one. So next year. Anyway, we move on to Raya and the Last Dragon to Star Wars and Lucasfilm. Um, from Star Wars, we have Rangers of the New Republic, Ahsoka with Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka Tano, Andor, The Bad Batch, an animated series. Visions, uh, an original series of animated short films uh, that celebrates the galaxy through the lens of the, lens of the world's uh, best Japanese anime creators. A new Lando series featuring the character Lando Calrissian. A droid story. Um, sorry, a droid story uh, featuring uh, Star Wars droids from Lucasfilm. We have Willow. It's an original series based off the film that starred uh, Warwick Davis, who is reprising his role, which I actually took the time to watch. Uh, James Mangold, uh, director of Ford vs. Ferrari, uh, will yeah. also, and, uh, and yeah, dress, mm-hmm. director of Ford vs. Ferrari will also be taking the helm to direct Indiana Jones, starring Harrison Ford in his fifth and final Indiana Jones film. 
And finally, as our last three pieces of Star Wars news, Taika Waititi will be directing the next Star Wars film starring a brand new trilogy altogether. Patty Jenkins, the director of the upcoming film Wonder Woman 1984, will be returning to direct Rogue Squadron, a new OT Star Wars film. And the biggest news that we have, Ewan McGregor will be returning to their respected will be returning to his respected role in Obi-Wan Kenobi, a TV series with Ewan as the title character along with Dorman actor Hayden Christensen returning as Darth Vader from the original prequels. Regardless how you feel about them, this is fantastic news indeed. Guys, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to take the floor here. Those last three pieces of news right up there uh, basically sold it for me uh, because uh, Taika Waititi, fantastic director and filmmaker. Yes, uh, agreed. The thing about the Indiana Jones film, okay, I thought kingdom of the crystal skull was you know that was a movie they're, they're just gonna they're, take they're... the l on l on that one <laughs> yeah so so what do you how do you uh, feel about the director of but, ford versus ferrari directing this film indiana i jones. with the way he directed ford versus yeah. ferrari that gives me hope that indiana jones 5 is actually gonna do something other than be like oh my whiny son shay the buff uh <laughs> Uh, the Rogue Squadron uh, OT film, that's going to be great because I believe Rogue Squadron is... They're the uh, Battlefront 2 campaign kind of like story thing where they were originally Imperials, but then they rebelled, but they're called Rogue Squadron. Rogue Squadron, I don't know much about, but I've heard a lot of good things about the Rogue Squadron story of Star Wars, so that's going to be good. And Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen... Hello there! Jokes, <laughs> joke all you want about like their overall performances in the prequels and how the prequels are not the The memes. Well, made. the prequels are all for the memes. We all know that. We like, respect those that. Two don't a, try it, Anakin! Those two have a very unique... Uh, dynamic chemistry that, very unique yeah chemistry. their chemistry it just works <laughs> it just works and you know the clips between Ewan McGregor alone made those films great but the the, the chemistry between the two and the fact that they are returning you know for you know they're going to be aged up uh, for a new series that's already Already a good sign for that series being good. And Ewan McGregor, Agreed. I've heard over the years, Ewan McGregor's just a really good guy. Agreed. Uh, and, you know, he's got a lot of films under his belt. And Hayden Christensen, I feel like it's a lot of hate. Probably because, you know, if you look at face value of his role as Anakin Skywalker in Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, uh... <laughs> And, you know, technically in episode six, when in newer releases, when he comes back as Anakin Skywalker, and it's not that one weird guy who's just like, hey, look at that Anakin person. No, it's now it's Hayden Christensen now. It's mm -hmm. it, whatever. Uh, it's it, you we're on the right track already with those kind of like three, four pieces of. And then, and then Patty Jenkins, the director of Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman 1984, is directing Rogue Squadron. Again, just... I've already talked about the Rogue Squadron thing. Yeah, uh, I love and I love X Wings. I love X Wings. Mm -hmm. So, but we need to move on to some other for Disney stuff, not just Lucasfilm, but Disney stuff. Yes, yes, indeed. Disney we have. World. So for our first four pieces of news, we have a new Mighty Duck series uh, coming this time in live action. Uh, Turner and Hooch starring Josh Peck from Drake and Josh and a Mastiff dog. That's uh, that's so interesting. I did not know that Josh Peck still existed. I mean, yeah, now, he, that's not he to didn't say... die or anything. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's that's not to say. That's, that's another thing. It's like a... you didn't know. It's like, oh, what the fuck has he been up to? Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, I, it's I know that so the fact that, Yeah, Turner and Hooch. So that'll be interesting. Um, Big Shot, a high school basketball film. And uh, the mysterious, uh, the mysterious Benedict Society, great. Like those are going to be television studios uh, series. So I'm hoping that there will that there will be uh, great. I think one is a film and the the rest the are series. But the I'm big not shot too is sure. a film. Uh, okay, Turner and Hooch, I think is the film. I think uh, I don't know. 
maybe. Uh, uh -huh. All right, so let's see. On our next slide, go on. Continue. Yes, indeed. Uh, Hocus Pocus 2, directed by Adam Shankman, with talks uh, about bringing the original actresses to reprise their roles. That's Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy Najimy. Um, Three Men and a Baby, starring Zac Efron. Yeah, I can only know how that's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Flora and Ulysses will be releasing uh, on February 19th of next year. A new Cheaper by the Dozen movie, this time starring uh, people of color. A new Diary of a Wimpy Kid film, only this time animated. And also a new Night at the Museum. Safety, as well as Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild, since Disney now owns Blue Sky Studios, will also be releasing. So, All right, quick yeah, pause I'm... here. Quick pause. Go ahead. They really yeah, should have left Night at the Museum where it was. Because that was I mean, Robin Williams' final film, and Disney bringing it back is basically just going to shit on its legacy. Yeah, well, opinion. leave it to when is that ever stopped? You know, I love Disney, but it's like when has that ever stopped Disney from like just doing that shit anyway? I mean, Dark Kid being anyway. an animated film. Uh, I don't know what they're going to cover. I feel like the animation. I feel like it should have been animated in the first place. It shouldn't have been a real life movie, because it's very mm -hmm. like the series is very cartoony in of itself. Trying to translate that into real life didn't work out well. Yeah. Uh, so, but you know, a new Ice Age Glad movie. To see what animated. do you expect? There's like fifty yeah. of them. Yeah. Uh, it'll be it'll be interesting that at least Ice Age is still a thing. But hey. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, anything else you want to say? Cruz? I think we're good. All right. Uh, Zootopia Plus as a... Uh, this is a well, series gee, based well, on Zootopia. Well, gee, th well, gee thanks for spoiling it. Thanks for spoiling it, asshole. Anyway. <laughs> Isn't that so what get, you just... Okay. We'll be getting TV uh, shows. We'll be getting TV shows uh, based off Big Hero 6, uh, Zootopia, The Princess and the Frog, and Moana, appropriately titled... Baymax, Zootopia Plus, Tiana, and Moana, all animated series which will release in 2022 and 2023, expect, uh, respectively. And uh, Iwaju, an Afrofuturism series which will release in 2022. I did ask a friend of mine if it had anything to do with uh, Wakanda, but apparently it does not. So this is a completely different type of thing. So I'm not too sure exactly how this one's going to work. And uh i did i did include this later but i'll go back i'll go back to it in in our next slide um i'm gonna skip ahead a little bit and just say uh, um Chip in Dale rich, Rangers yeah, yeah. is on the next slide i believe yeah yeah so. an official an official movie coming to disney plus and we'll be spending time in Colombia with the brand new disney anim animated film called Encanto. and i'm very very excited uh oh, once we get done with Encanto. um in indeed so um, so, yeah, we're going to go ahead and move on to Chippendale Rescue Rangers, directed by Akiva Schaefer. Uh, some of these films that we already talked about already, so we'll talk about the ones that we have not. Um, we have a prequel to the live-action Lion King that doesn't need to exist, but God given the production it. team, I'm... Oh, but given to the production team... Spoilers, asshole, blah, blah, blah. I'm at the very so, least intrigued. Uh, directed by... This film is directed by Barry Jenkins, uh, director of the critically acclaimed film uh, Moonlight. Uh, the Little Mermaid will also be given the live-action remake uh, treatment starring ha uh, Halle Bailey, Under the Sea. Then we have Pinocchio, who will be pulling the strings of the careers of Tom Hanks and director Robert Zemeckis. That's will be take be will be take will be taking to the skies once again with Peter Pan and Wendy, another live-action film directed by David Lowry. Things will start getting a little spottier with Cruella, starring Emma Stone, directed by Craig Gillespie. It's a uh, supposed remake of 101 Dalmatians. <clears throat> And Whoopi Goldberg returns as a musical penguin nun as Sister Mary Clarence with Sister Act 3, directed by Tyler Perry? Boo. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I mean I, I, I mean I've seen the I've seen the first two sister acts, so when I, this should, when I was when I was in Germany uh, the first time in twenty seventeen in Berlin, um I think it was a play, but it might have been a play, but I saw a poster for Sister Act and Whoopi Goldberg was on that, and I think it was the first one. So uh I imagine she's she's a mainstay of that uh, now series, I guess. Uh, and uh, I may have missed a uh, a film. I think it's uh, Disenchanted. Uh, apparently, it's a uh, sequel with Amy Adams. So I think this is a oh, it's a new coming film with the same person who directed Enchant to the same actor who directed Enchanted, same actors. So 
We're getting another enchanted film, guys. Another was enchanted, enchanted film. Was enchanted the so. one where it was like fairy tale characters got teleported to New York City? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I, it was. That was. Yeah. It's a very unique movie that you know. I think it worked well. It's been years since I've seen it, so that's why I. It's ask been about weird it. since I've seen it, but not only that, and I don't. I, the, the, I, the, 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 I the hesitate funny to think how this he... works, but there was a Game Boy game from it, apparently. I like the part where they come on, where they come into New York City, and the prince just like sings, and then he's like ran over by bicycles. That's like the bar. <laughs> how is your hot dog? <laughs> I love it. Anyway. <laughs> I feel like that's uh, a good one, but we need to move <laughs> on real quick to big news. Uh, yes, Pixar, right? Uh, Pixar, Pixar, yes. I need to use the bathroom real quick. I'm so sorry. I'll be right back. Oh, don't don't worry. Uh, Pixar, we move from yes. dis we move from Disney to Pixar now. Uh, Soul will be releasing on Christmas Day, December 25th. We'll talk a little more about that next week. Uh, Doug Day's Cars and Win or Lose will be getting their own TV series. Pixar's next feature film is uh, Luca, a film about a celebration of the friendship between a boy named Luca and his best friend Alberto during their unforgettable summer. Um, we'll be diving. That film will be diving into uh, theaters from June 2021. Uh, director of the Academy Award-winning short uh, Bao Domi Shi um, brings us uh, Turning Red. Uh, Meet May. She uh, experiences the awkwardness of being a teenager with with an added twist. Um, when she gets too excited, she transforms into a giant red panda, and it's coming to theaters March 11th, 2022. And finally, blasting into the theaters to infinity and beyond is the definitive story of the original Space Ranger with Lightyear starring Chris Evans on June 17th, 2022. So this, this is interesting. This is very interesting. Uh, I... I still remember the Zootopia debacle at BLFC 2016. They didn't have the key to play the movie, so the Hotel Cinema tried to sub it with Kung Fu Panda. That did not go well. No, it did not. I imagine people probably what, figured it out go pretty well? quickly. Uh, what Shudder said. To... I was with him when this happened, by the way. So oh. It's trying to sub the... It's like, eventually, maybe uh, one minute in, you figured out, hey, the lines don't match up. What the fuck's going on here? And, and for the record, <laughs> I feel so bad. I feel so bad for that guy who had to say that Zootopia wasn't working. I feel so bad for that guy. But um, I just want to, I do want to go back to a little bit to uh, Zoot to the big news right here uh, with Zootopia Plus and uh, Turning Red. Zootopia Plus is a TV series, and I think it's going to focus on the characters that are not uh, Nick Wilde and Judy Hopps, which is good. I like characters. I like world building. I like that sort of thing. There you go. building always works. It always does that well. My biggest concern with Utopia Plus, I don't want it to just be cute characters doing cute things. I want it to be new. I want it to be fresh. I want the ideas to really Yeah, no, explore the to... world. You talk about yes. world building. Yeah, explore the world. Do yeah, it. You know, I I want to be able to look at this animation and say, yes, I am connecting with these characters wholeheartedly. I don't want it just to be you know, oh, cutesy animals who are furries. No, that's not substance enough for me. That doesn't do it enough for me. The same goes with Turning Red, a film about a female who literally turns into a giant red panda. I need more than just that. I need We've more seen I need conflict. We've seen Akratsuko. This is rookie numbers. Yes, I, I've, I've seen, like, I need more than that. I, I, I really do. So, uh, Naka, what do you have to say regarding a car series? Because your biggest, your biggest response was just eh i mean you know i know there's no paul newman there's no george carlin you already killed off two characters right there sure that you know you should get a quick replacement for george carlin hey. no no thank you no thank you <laughs> and then and then and then what about the light movies. and then what about Lightyear? that's going to be coming out on uh with chris evans an actual Lightyear film that so is chris evans chris evans is buzz Lightyear. It, yes, not as like the toy Buzz Lightyear, but like in the Buzz Lightyear kind of universe, which has already yes. kind of been explored in like that TV show, which I'm not sure if it was uh, Tim. A it was Tim Allen who voiced. Uh, God, I can't believe I'm forgetting who voiced Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear. It was Tim, Tim Allen. Allen. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm but not I don't sure think if I remember it was Buzz it, it, Lightyear it, it, in that cartoon. But this yeah. this Lightyear movie is going to be live action, right? 
or is it going to be animated? Uh, it is going to be an animated uh, film, but it's going to be, it's not going to be in this. It's going to be in a completely different animation style, completely different, that and it's going to be starry. The TV, that uh, animated TV show was the same way back in like the early two thousands. I want to say. Was I that can go ahead and. I can go ahead and give you an image of what uh, he looks like. This is what he looks yeah. like. I'm going to send it to you on yeah. Telegram right now. I'm not putting it on the screen, by the way. That, that, the thing that's was fine. That... Just, I'll just, uh, I'll just let me know what you think. I think the greatest strength of the Toy Story thing is that Buzz was uh, voiced oh, was by pretty Tim pretty Allen, pretty while uh, Woody was voiced by uh, Tom Hanks, and they it, just go, them just going back and forth was just like comedy. You gold. were saying that. That looks pretty good. I I like that style. I like yeah, your style. So, so but right, I like your well, catchy. Yeah, Pixar content. It's all it's there. So you know, like I said, when it comes to Zootopia Plus and Turning Red, I need more than just cute animals doing cute things. It's great. It's a plus, and that's why I like Zootopia a little more than I and a little more than I would. But I like Zootopia more for the story characters you know, writing and all these other things more than I like the fact that they're just furries. But cause that's, that's who I am guys. That is who I am. I, I, there's, there's really nothing else for me to, for me to say that is who I am. So, um, and now finally it's time to see what's going on in the world of superheroes from Marvel. So, uh, Naka. Oh. Um, <laughs> No, 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 but really, Naka, I do kind of need you to go back and forth between the two because this one got a little mixy, I want to say. So I was kind of oh, hoping that they would two. put their TV the series on all on one sides and then, you know, they, but they mixed and matched it. So, yeah. Finally, it's time to see what's going on in the world of superheroes with Marvel. We start with TV series WandaVision starring Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany on January 15th of, the ne of next year. The Falcon and the Winter Soldiers starring Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan will also appear on March 19th. Here's now a massive plot dump of a new TV series appearing, Miss Marvel. A uh, new TV series starring Iman Vellani as Kamala Khan will be coming in a later year on 2021. Hawkeye, She-Hulk, Moon Knight, uh, Secret Invasion, Ironheart, Armor Wars. Whoa, what whoa, if, whoa, uh, slow down, slow down. Because yes. I'm yes, trying there's to mark off which ones. Let's see. Yes, After She-Hulk, it's Moon Knight, this one. Yes. Secret Invasion. It's Ironheart. Uh, Ironheart. Armor Wars, Armor Wars is on the next one. And then What If is on the previous one. Yeah, and then we're Loki starring Tom Hiddleston and I Am Groot starring Vin Diesel and the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special starring arriving in the years between 2021 and 2022 on Disney+. Plus. All right. Um, all right, so here we go. Uh, and and, I think and finally... Back to the previous slide for... Uh, yeah. Where is it? Yeah. Black Widow. Black Widow will be crawling in theaters with a new date of March 7th. Uh, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings will be arriving on July 9th. Christian Bale will be joining the cast in Thor Love and Thunder as the villain Gore the God Butcher starring Natalie Portman and will release on May 6, 2022. Uh, Brie Larson is returning for Captain Marvel 2, this time directed by Nia DaCosta. On November eleventh, twenty twenty two. All right, I want to um, I want to pause real quick. Brie Larson okay. does not deserve the hate that she gets for playing Captain Marvel. I just feel like her character was just not written well in both Captain oh. Marvel as well as uh, Endgame. I, I, I I'm yeah. just gonna say this: Ka Brie Larson, great actress. It's the direction that was given. It to was her. the writing direction good. that was yeah that yeah. was where the issues. Th that was the thing that led me to believe, and when I saw. Um, Captain Marvel was one of the ones that I saw when I was in Budapest. Um, I saw uh, Endgame, Cat, uh, Captain Marvel, and there's one other one I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, it was it was just like there 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 was. I think people were paying attention to the like the little bits that could cause a little bit of controversy, and it's just like oh, fucking God, just let them. Yeah, it's unfortunate when <laughs> but, she was... When but then again, it's just like, Brie Larson has an ego, and it's just like the whole, is that a personal attack thing, and then you just roll your eyes, it's like, oh my god, get over yourself. But also... It's, just, it's, it's more so the fact that I... F and I'm going to make a controversial opinion that may sound controversial to any person who's saying it. 
we have women character we have women female characters and i understand you know like we want to be we want to be you know the whole inclusive more inclusive they're half-assed they're not done well no because a lot they're of the not, times they're written by dudes yes they're they're not oh, they are go. not done well you can like here's the thing if you can it's, you can create more inspiration of it and it's great it's just they need to be done well and if they're not done or written well then the character fails as a character it's the whole reason why Mulan 2020 20 was such a flop because the female protagonist was already perfect. There was no flaw with her, and that's a problem. So, um, anyway, right. yes. On November 11, 2022, Mahershala Ali will now play the character Blade in their all new movie. Uh, our lovely microscopic duo returns once again with Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. And Ooh. you know, I'm I'm excited to see what they're going to do with Ant Man. I like Ant Man a lot. I don't know if uh, you know Ant Man does need to be a little bit more of a bigger scale because I feel uh, like Ant Man is a very smaller movie. Pardon the wordplay, but <laughs> I I didn't see the original one, but um, I did watch um, Ant Man the Wasp. Uh, it was during one of the transatlantic flights. Um, I want to say it's the one returning home because I had a. Uh, so, uh, the last night I was in Europe, I was in a hotel room with my dad in Prague. He snored so fucking loud, I didn't get a single fucking hour of sleep. But we watched, uh, uh, was it Ferdinand, the one with John Cena, uh, that night. So that was that. And then uh, I was awake the next few hours till I got on the plane. And then I watched uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, which was a very good movie. Uh, so, um, yeah, there's that. <laughs> we do need to we do need to talk about a huge. I don't want to say elephant in the room, but a very very big, interesting elephant in the yet, room. Elephant esque well, creature. It's it's a it's a direction that they're taking that you can't really understand as to as to, and you don't know if it's going to work. Black Panther two will release on July eighth. Uh, 2022 as well. Marvel has stated that they will not recast the character in honoring Chadwick Boseman's legacy as Keen T'Challa, but will instead explore the world of Wakanda and the rich characters introduced in the first film. I don't understand why they don't just call the film Wakanda. It would make a lot more interesting and a lot more sense. So I would only hope that perhaps they just ran out of time and they just didn't I, need, they needed I to think... make it maybe you could have you could have had a wakanda as like a subtitle it'd be like black panther 2 like colon wakanda but yeah it, as i imagine that they were stricken with it uh his death it was as unexpected to them as it was to anyone else but uh and again like i was when I went to see the movie, um, it was a an event for our college that was a uh, uh, a lot of black students uh, joined in on and wanted to see, and they were understandably very excited in the theater. And I was like, you know, I want to watch the fucking movie, but also like I ex I understand why you're excited for this. But uh, and in the end, you know, I saw what I saw was a great movie. Uh, everyone was excited and happy about it. Uh, Chadwick Boseman was a fucking hero, uh, in more ways than one in that movie. But uh, now it's just like I think that's the best thing they can do is like explore the the world of Wakanda as it is. But just calling it Black Panther Two, I agree, is like it, it doesn't lend itself to be as a. Uh... It doesn't like you can't like it's almost it's almost like. I don't. I don't know if I should make the best the best comparison. Maybe it could work like like the Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening. Zelda's not technically in the game, and yet the it's game more, still manages to work. But who knows? Naka, what do you not, think? It's not quite a spinoff, but it's also just like this is like the the world they built, uh, Wakanda yeah. and everything. Like, I I think exploring the world's great idea. Title. You know, it may be forgiven, it depending on how well the movie does, but uh, I do wish it the best because I think Wakanda is a very cool idea to discover, to uh, not discover, to uh, explore, um, 
especially how it was led up to with the uh, previous uh, Marvel Universe films. Uh, Naka, what do you have to say? Honestly, you know, I think that for now, because of Chadwick Boseman's previous betrayals as Black Panther, that they're, it's a good idea that they're choosing not to recast him, at least for now. Uh, yeah. In the future, obviously for different Avengers movies in the future, uh, where there's, you know, the crossovers happen, whether he his character plays a part in it or not, you know, that's going to be recast, unfortunately, but we'll get there when the time comes. Exactly. Uh, I, I still haven't seen Black Panther, so... Uh, I don't know too much about, you know, Wakanda. Well, you, as, well, I mean, you do have a Disney Plus account, so... I do. You could. But, again, I'm always for world building, and, you know, there's a little bit of it in uh, Infinity War. Uh, I'm not sure how much of it there was in... Uh, Get this man as she had. In I think Black that... Panther, but there's probably a lot that I'm missing, but... I think the Black realm, Panther was the best. There, there, like, there was a lot of world building in yeah. Black Panther, a lot. It, so I think Wakanda it was the best just, standalone hero film since Iron Man three. Mm-hmm. I'll say that. So Wakanda is just—it's such a unique kind yeah. of set piece in the Marvel universe because you know we have outer space, we have all these other planets that you know are other, you know that are set in for what they're supposed to be, but then you know you have Earth. You have uh, Sokovia, which is, you know, supposed to be Eastern Bloc, Europe, slash Western Asia. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, you've got, you know, you've got those set regions, but Wakanda, where it's got that, it's that futuristic tech that's, you know, from Vibranium, you know, from aliens and stuff, but it's grounded in reality and it's grounded on Earth. It's that fusion between the two that really needs to be seen more and i feel like with this black panther 2 they should give it a subtitle but you know time's going to change they they have a yeah. lot of time before the film is actually put out in theaters or however it's going to be released so that they could add a subtitle to it or they might change the title for yes. it because black panther 2 might as, it could be just like the placeholder title yes, so, yes indeed just as it is with like spider-man 3 um because i don't know it, the first one what was it Spider-Man uh, Homecoming, and then it was Far From Home. Now it's just Spider-Man 3. I imagine I'll probably change it before it actually happens. But uh, yeah, I, I imagine that the title planning, a lot of that probably came before... Um, Chad, honestly, it came before. Passing. Yeah, yes. it, it came before all that. And the, the whole thing is that because he's such an integral character, he is the Black Panther... That you have to then, because he's gone, kind of have to rework the overall universe, considering his absence. Not have to, not that you have to model it around him, but you have to like keep that in mind because you don't have him available as a continuous role anymore. But uh, I, I do think that uh, there is definitely a possibility for a new. See, and they're planning on it for a new uh, Black Panther film to be made. Uh, I just and hope that you know they take it, take a good direction with it. And uh, I, I'm guessing they're gearing something towards continuity with uh, how uh, you know people die in the series and uh, how, how Captain America has like, sorry, spoilers, has kind of like, given up his mantle to the the Falcon all that like i feel like there there's there's ways they can work around with it um but they just have to it has to take time for them to just work around it and all that yeah um because it's kind of funny one person told me that disney does not make films they make content and it's kind of turning out to be a little true but at the same time they kind of do kind of they kind of do try their best to keep it original it's but not mutually they, exclusive <laughs> no but um, but we still have we still have one more piece of news that we do need to announce. Finally, uh, John Watts, the director of the current Spider-Man film starring Tom Holland, will be directing a new feature 
of Fantastic Four, only this time joining the MCU. So yeah, you see that little film? You see that little film called Fan Four Stick? Yeah, you can basically yeet that into the fucking sun. Mm-hmm. Which, is, which, which is great, because a lot of people... This is great. Now that the Fantastic Four can enter into the world, we can finally start seeing... Maybe they'll probably be in... Um, They'll probably join the Avengers. Hey, what do you think, uh, Naka? Talking fucking long enough. Is Chris Evans right? going to be Johnny Flame? I don't think so. Because <laughs> oh, he... that's the whole joke is that in Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2, I know at least it's in Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2, you, get, you can do play as Captain America and uh, Johnny Flame. Uh, you put them two, you put those two in your party, you get an achievement saying, hey, you look familiar or something, something along those lines, but took them goddamn long enough to finally get in the MCU. Apparently so. All right. And, um, and as a bit of interesting news, uh, Disney Plus will be increasing their price of subscription on March 2021 by, are you guys ready for this? A whole dollar, making it seven ninety nine. Oh Oh, no. Honestly, this isn't oh, surprising. Oh, no. Is this isn't surprising given to how well it has been doing, if anything. I have more problems with premiere access, if anything else. And I mean, is there like do, is there really anything to be worried about them increasing their, you know, subscription by whole dollar? I mean, we all I, saw it coming. I, I feel like this this happens with a lot of other services. I mean, even Rooster Teeth did it, but Netflix then again, is going for, up. For me, I, I've been watching um uh ruby the new season of ruby rooster teeth which has so far been very good a lot of intense character development but uh yeah i feel like they're they're just like trying to get away with like it just one dollar more it's like i feel like that's a little bit like come on man i mean a dollar more for a lot of quality content there's there's not a whole lot of filler on disney plus i gotta no, admit but- Compared to Netflix, where there's so much filler and like it's just content for the sake of, yeah, let's Netflix, have all this stuff. It's me. Feel like with Disney, has, I will Disney, say, a lot of their stuff is forthcoming. Netflix has been making very poor decisions lately. They are yeah. giving seek. They are canceling products that do not need to be canceled after one season, and they are giving their money to big mouth. Give, Giving their money, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I was just about to say that because they're putting it. I mean, n- don't get me wrong. I understand corporations, you know, data charts, all these other things. What makes the most money? I get it, but it's like this is but where this is, home, this is this is this is where people start to you know click brains in their head. It's not working, Netflix. It's not working. It's not working for me. I don't know if it's working for anyone else, but. We're animani, totally insaney. Next, Netflix is fucking lamey. Animani, yes, those are the facts. Those are the facts. All right. Too well, many what you, which which uh, which uh, of the TV series are you excited for in the Marvel Studios, and which of the movies are you personally excited for? Hold on, I need to scroll all the way back down to where it is. Let's see. For Marvel, let's see TV series Hawkeye. In the really? Loki series, pretty much, pretty much those It'll two be... because Hawkeye. A lot of people shit on Hawkeye. Is Loki character. want a series or is it a movie? No, Again, Loki's that's gonna confusion. be a series. I would probably yeah. like it. I, I love Tom Hiddleston's uh, Loki, and I love especially how him and uh, there's a YouTube video of how um uh, Thor throwing shit at Loki for one minute and fifteen seconds. It's just like, are you real? Thunk <laughs> ow. But uh, yeah, I think uh, that and the Thor, um, uh, Thunder. What's it? It's called Love and Thunder. That's what it's called. Indeed. Um, that one. It looks interesting to me. Um, all these pro- do look interesting to me, but it's like when they come out, you know what? Just fucking, you get them where you can get them. You know what I mean? Indeed. Uh, but uh, I think uh. Yeah, Marvel's at a point now where it's just like, all right, now you can explore more backstories because, you know, you already had the whole endgame thing and all that went down. Um, so yeah, and then the holiday special for Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> really not sure how that's going to go, but uh, yeah, I guess I'm more interested in uh, Thor, Black Panther, and all that. 
I'm excited for uh, WandaVision because I like because I like uh, Scarlet Witch and Vision, and yeah. I'm also and I'm also excited for King T'Challa. I'm also excited for well, the not King T'Challa, Black Panther two rather. I'm excited for Ant Man and the Wasp because I like Ant Man. I'm excited for Blade. I'm. Yeah, I mean, it has something for everybody. I'm also excited for Thor Love and Thunder, even though um, the, the film is going to star Natalie Portman, apparently. Thunder. Was, so, so I hope this film works, and we'll just have to wait and see. And that is it. That is for Investor's Days. Uh, that that is, is for Investor's Day. A yeah. lot of content to process. Oh, I it would, down it would do well for Thor Love and Thunder to uh, have the song uh, Thunder and Lightning by Ninja Six Party. It would be so good. Let that be thunder. Lightning. All that. Indeed. Anyway. A monomarth can... Uh, Anyway, uh, is there anything else we want to talk about uh, that we want to discuss for the agenda? I mean, uh, for this week? No, that's pretty much it. I have a shepherd's pie waiting for me. I'm very hungry for that. Oh, sorry. boy. Fucking shepherd's pie. So, Dive into that shit. Do we want to talk about what's going on next weekend, or do we want to say uh, Next weekend? weekend's pretty much going to be it's going to be our holiday episode, because we're going to take a break for a couple of weeks, and then we're going to come back. Yes. Uh, Imagine yeah. that. We're coming back on January. We're not even done. Yeah, yeah baby. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, again, get hyped for... 100 or bust this season. Get hyped for the countdown of uh, your boys' favorite albums. Try to guess which one they are. I guess you can't, but, you know, who fucking cares? You know, it's just my thing. And again, you know, it's all rock and metal. I know. that That's what I enjoy. But, you know what? They deserve the shout-outs that they get. And uh, I think that I've comprised pretty good list this year and i've had my reasons behind all them uh so we'll have the unveiling of that next week and the honorable mentions that uh just missed the cut but definitely deserve mentions um yes yeah yes indeed we're wrapping up 2020 we are wrapping up 2020 and we have like a couple more days to go before this hopefully shitty year ends and so a and a less shittier year can begin. Yeah. <laughs> Still I'll shitty, you but who less are, shitty. Yeah, of the you are, who are celebrating Hanukkah, enjoy your time uh, this week. Because uh, we have Hanukkah started uh, very, uh, a few days ago. Yeah. Happy right Hanukkah away, to those who celebrate and everything. Happy holidays to everyone. And uh, we will look forward to seeing you next week. Either way, guys, that, that, is, that is our show for tonight. My name is Scarfy. I'm Naka. And I am Cruz. And thank you for joining us on Subway for Entertainment. We hope that you have a uh, blessed weekend. Stay safe out there. Stay awesome. Stay awesome. Have a good night, guys. Take care this week, everybody.